So, you know, next to the electrical parameters, reliability is a key sales metric for a solar module uh, with the advent of uh, high efficiency cell technologies on top of uh, new formats. The equation for module reliability has become quite dynamic in the recent uh, times. So the new cell technologies such as top corn and heterojunction are requiring alternate packing materials compared to PERC. And in today's conference, we have the representation from three different uh, streams of PV manufacturing addressing the topic of reliability. So one is module manufacturing itself, materials, and the production equipment. So taking also this as a template for the panel discussion, uh, we will further discuss the reliability aspect of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the re reliability aspect uh, from the different perspectives, module manufacturers and material suppliers and production equipment. So basically Christian, Enco and Paolo respectively representing these three segments. So, um, now, not only we have a lot of uh, innovation in recent years, module prices have been hitting rock bottom, more or less week after week for many months. Uh, as you, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but we also have our price index at uh, Tang News, which we publish on a weekly basis, from which you can already see that. So this also means companies need to look for less costly components and higher amount of cost pressure, which obviously have consequences on reliability. Uh, at least this is what uh, happened in the past. So how is the price pressure is impacting quality and reliability of uh, products in general? So question to all. Um, maybe from the module point of view, it is difficult to put exactly into numbers. Um, I think that uh, what it means is that uh, customers have to be quite cautious about what they buy so that they make sure that they buy uh, products that have been manufactured with the right components and not with some components that have been sold cheaper, but maybe don't have the same performance. At the same time, if you have a site that doesn't have humidity, you don't need a material that is very good with humidity. Or if you have a site that doesn't have a lot of UV, you don't need materials that are excellent against UV. So it is not a blanket statement that and model manufacturers, uh, we in general, uh, fine tune these things as well according to the customer exact necessity. So it is maybe not fair or not good to just think that always in every single moment, every manufacturer has to use only the materials that prove to be absolutely on the top of excellence because it's not necessary and maybe it costs too much. That's uh, interesting. So Imko, what do you have to say on that? Yeah, I think if, if, if I uh, refer to, to the to the back sheets, um, I think like I showed, there's there's not so much to uh, uh, to reduce the cost for for a backseat supplier. Uh, of course, he has the economy of scale, and and some of the of the leading suppliers can can benefit from from that. But at the moment, uh, prices go that low that even those uh, suppliers cannot um, yeah have a profitable uh, profitable business. Uh, and it's more like yeah, how long can they survive and uh, yeah, whether that will push them to to reduce the cost and bring reliability of of uh, their customers uh, uh, down is uh, I can I, it's impossible for me to uh, to say. But I mean, it's it's like I said, there's there are not so many strings they can can pull, and uh, yeah, that mean, means either you go down. Or uh, yeah, you you really uh, uh, try to uh, yeah reduce your the, the cost of materials. Paolo, do you have anything to say? Well, from uh, from our side, you know, <clears throat> reliability or pressure can that we see from customers is is more on having a stable or reliable production capacity, right? It comes from like 
the machines, uh, the process need to be as fast as possible and uh, and uh, getting or out producing as, as, as better quality as possible and it needs to be stable of course so it, it, the reliability also comes from that from that side and that that we achieve with the uh, huge investments on r d uh developing uh, new processes uh different ways how to do the same things uh, testing new components um and of course um keeping the, the 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 cost down as well because it's important right it's it's a mix of uh, a little bit mix of everything uh, but basically, it's uh, it's it's making sure that the machine produces high speed uh, at a stable um, pace and uh, and uh, with a stable uh, quality output. Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, um, Christian, uh, let's talk uh, technology. So, Lars in the beginning presented his reliability findings with uh, Topcon modules. So, I think you also tried to address a little bit on on how your uh, reliability is so important for your hydro junction modules with this uh, PID uh, ceiling. So, <laughs> are you also working on? glass backsheet configuration because this was also the point uh, raised by Lars that you know glass glass is working fine with topcon and uh, there are products for topcon in in glass backsheet configuration but to best of my knowledge there are not so many glass backsheet so can you explain a little bit on this so uh, from our point of view glass backsheet is not interesting for heterogeneity or maybe even in general for moving forward in the industry because of two reasons. The first one can be solved. And uh, INCO already was showing very good performance in terms of degradation. Uh, it is the very good isolation that glass gives to, to the cells, uh, at least in the surface, right? So with glass, uh, what we have with glass on the rear side, what, what we have is that the isolation of the cells is only a worry on the edges and in the holes where you have the connectors from inside into the junction boxes. So we move the issue from being a generic issue that you can see in every cell if there is a water ingress in the module uh, through the back sheet to something that you have to control on the edges. And that led us to think about combining uh, edge ceiling and glass back sheet uh, as a whole. Uh, if I look at the market, um, current Two square meter modules or under two square meter modules for residential are uh, only 22 kilos with glass glass due to the thinner glasses. And uh, if you look at the utility scale, you see by facial is a necessity. Uh, additional to that, in CNI, uh, clamping on the short sides is something that on flat roofs is a necessity. And on larger sites, uh, mechanical stability of the module with wind, mostly, uh, with snow in some regions, is a must. We see that all of that points to glass glass. All of that. There, there are applications where you want lightweight modules, so you go glass back sheet, transparent back sheet maybe even. But we see this maybe as a niche uh, moving forward and not as the main application field. So that's why we moved to solve in glass glass, let's say the reliability. And for the moment, we don't plan yet uh, as of now to have glass and then back sheet on the rear side. Having said that, now that it is possible, let me just show you here, just for a second, uh, that I don't have the background. Oh, I cannot change that the background is shown. Okay, it doesn't matter. I wanted to show you that Historically, there are glass back sheet uh, heterogeneous modules that have been performing perfectly well over 20 years. So, uh, as Inco said, um, reliability is maybe can be solved. So, I don't want to hit that as a point because uh, that's what technology is for. Yeah, perhaps I can also share some experience from, from, from our side. Um, it's not so much with Topcom, but especially in, in heterojunction, if we uh, sample our materials to our backsheets to heterojunction suppliers. We never know uh, what comes out of their results. And and by now, so and I, I was also strengthened by the by the presentation of Lars. Is is that my conclusion is is that 
uh, at this moment, heterojunction cell developers uh, is still in development. So uh, I know, uh, and uh, probably that's where Lars refers to, there are a couple of uh, heterojunction cell suppliers who can uh, uh, make modules with glass back sheets and, and they can fulfill 25 or 30 year uh, warranty, no, no problem. But there are also uh, suppliers with heterojunction cells. They are so sensitive to, to water that if you um, uh, only use uh, a back sheet if you uh, add something like uh, uh, aluminum barrier or so. Uh, so it really depends on, on, the, on the stage of, of where these heterojunction cell suppliers are in their development. And uh, I, I assume that in five years time, they will be as good as the top one cells uh, in, in water sensitivity, uh, at least. So then I don't see, and, and, and I must also see the, uh, say the whole discussion on glass back sheet, uh, glass, glass. I mean, it's a lot of honor for, for a back sheet, but to be honest, this is not, uh, uh, I mean, uh, back sheet plays a role, but there's also the encapsulant. There's also uh, the frame, if you talk about mechanical load. So I, I, I would say we, we should think much more from, from a, a system uh, point of view and, and much less in, in pointing to glass back sheet or, or uh, glass glass because that doesn't make sense to me at least. So. Yeah, no, sure. I think you were absolutely right over there because uh, when it comes to the reliability aspect, it's uh, uh, more an encapsulation and the other other head sealants and frame, all these contribute to glass, uh, Backsheet has relatively less role, but you know this is how the industry characterizes a particular module type. It's either glass, glass, or black sheet, uh, glass back sheet. So you know, uh, just also reflecting a little bit on, on this segment, uh, this main classification. So now, for many reasons, most of the module makers are are really preferring glass glass so like christian said so do you see that the pendulum is uh, coming back sometime in the near future to back sheets because at one point back sheet was the major or the mainstream yeah i i would well it, it, i mean there's a lot of bugs there uh, i mean uh, if if you go back in in time, it, indeed it used to be glass back sheets, uh, and then uh, we went to the bifacial modules, and uh, sheets were not not that good. So they they quite a number of these first generation transparent back sheets they failed, and that was where the industry and especially investors, because we're talking about utility scale, so that's driven by uh, by uh, huge investments, and about bank. Then you talk about bankability and trust. And, and that was where uh, glass really uh, uh, advanced. And uh, what we see now is that in, in, the, in, the, in the second generation of transparent back sheets, the performance is much better. It's much more reliable if you produce modules with these transparent back sheets, but they were still too expensive. And now we are at a stage where also transparent back sheets tend to be cheaper than glass. And uh, I, I think that is, I would say the option opportunity where, uh, uh, Backsheets or transparent backsheets might get uh, uh, some some market share again, uh, but like I said, there's a lot of bugs and, and this is difficult to 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 predict. And and now I'm talking about utility scale. I, I still think in in uh, uh, rooftop, uh, also commercial, industrial, uh, where weight uh, plays a role. There, there is a, a still a huge drive for for glass backsheet modules, also in the handling, uh, so to place it in on the roof. So, you know, Ignacio from J Solar has also expressed his views about the glass back sheet configuration. So, you know, but in this entire configuration, back sheet is not the only one. So it's more like encapsulation also plays a, a, a major role here. So, so how much it has the uh, impact on back sheet? So how much role you can, uh, uh, as a back sheet maker, you can, play in order to make the entire system more, uh, you know, work towards equating to the back sheet? Well, that's <laughs> one of the reasons why we also uh, uh, are developing encapsulant uh, material, uh, okay. which, which perfectly matches with our, uh, with, with our back sheet. Um, 
uh, but I mean, there's there are sufficient uh, encapsulants pay, uh, players in in, uh, in in the world who have very good products and and uh, can uh, make a great match with with our back sheet. So, like I said, it's more on the on, on the on the system level which we need to improve than looking at individual components just uh, uh, as such. So, so do you have any specific products uh, for uh, for Hydro Junction and Topcon uh, as of now? For 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 Topcon, um, we don't see any issues in durability or reliability. Uh, so, if if we test Topcon cells, uh, um, we can fulfill all all requirements. Um, of course, also there uh, the encapsulant is is very important. Um, in in a heterojunction cell, yeah, the, the picture is very mixed, and and at this moment we are not really. I mean, you could go to a higher barrier. Eh? You could put include some barrier properties, uh, additional barrier properties in your in your back sheet, but it's also like, yeah, who's going to move here? Uh, uh, should we improve the barrier properties, or should the cell supplier improve its sensitivity to water? And and to be honest, we, we see sufficient uh, business potential still in, in, in Topcon and bivacial modules with uh, uh, Topcon cells. And uh, um, it, it looks like time will solve the issue and, and heterojunction cells will become better. And like I said, there are a couple of, of suppliers which already uh, supply glass backseat modules for, for a while without any, any, any problem. So maybe to give some context to this, because it's true, um, um, Sanyo Panasonic uh, supplied with aluminium layer in between the back sheet for many years. Uh, but by the end of its production run, let's say the fi last five years, they had found an encapsulation and back sheet combination that didn't include that barrier that still uh, was giving uh, perfect uh, protection. So the technology is not uh, the problem, it's just, uh, let's say, company choice or combination of everything that will work well or will work less well, depending on yeah, the case. Yeah. So, so Paolo, let's uh, look at the uh, production equipment side of the thing. So what are the recent developments in interconnection equipment towards ensuring or even improving the module reliability? Well, it depends on which technology we we will be talking about. But uh, basically, uh, I think it's on the on the soldering uh, way. The soldering stations have been um, uh, increased, uh, having increased controlling uh, systems. Um, as I said before, um, soldering has been uh, split in uh, multiple steps instead of one single step. Um, and then the the not not related to the machine itself, but the the development of materials used for uh, interconnecting the the cells also plays an important role because then it will impact what kind of process you can use. Um, but the latest scenario, the latest challenges is is being with the with the zero BB technology or this low temperature soldering, um, in in which we developed or not only us, I guess, but um, the, the industry is developing um, a, a printing solutions for glue or ECA on the cells, and then um, applying the, the wires up to 24 wires, and then still debating, I think this is still a little bit an, uh, an, um, undecided or an unclear, what is soldering should happen at the stringer or soldering should happen at the laminator, <clears throat> and what kind of glue should be used or the ECA should be used. But basically, on the equipment side, you have to develop or you know uh, bet your R and D uh, resources on uh, ribbon handling, accuracy, and controlling, and uh, soldering monitoring uh, as well. So basically, it comes from uh, from from these two um, main key points, which is uh, wire controlling and um, soldering temperature accuracy. So, uh, you know, now there is a real trend and you have also she, uh, shown that uh, there is a SMBB is really the trend. So is 24 bus bars is the maximum when it, before going to uh, zero bus bars? 
Yes, and actually 24 bus bars, it's it, it's not 24 bus bars, it's 24 wires because the 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 zero BB it's a cell without any bus bars, right? And though at that in that cell it will be applied 24 wires, 24 connectors, let's say. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's the maximum that we've been using for not known soldering solutions. Let's so we we call it gluing or applying ECA, so low temperature solutions. We have been doing maximum 24 wires. But for Topcon, <clears throat> the maximum that we see and uh, it's ideally the optimum uh, number of bus bars. It's uh, 16 and 18 bus bars, um, depending if it's a uh, M10, M12. But um, usually you, you don't go more than 18 for top uh, oh. solutions. So then I, I also heard that a foil based interconnection is also widely discussed uh, in, in, in China. So do you, have you heard about it or do you have any details to share? We know about it, um, but this foil thing is, um, I think is what we call the MWT, right? <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> we are not betting too much efforts on this so far. Main reason is that the cost related to this uh, technology is still high. And, um, and we are reluctant about uh, this technology being able to succeed because it also it's it as you see the industry is, is been moving last class that transparent back sheet also because cells are being bifacial and once you do a MWT or a, this uh, conductive foil based foils then you're not gonna have bifacial uh, aspect of it so other than that. Um, <clears throat> Connecting cells through conductive uh, pack sheets, it's a very, it's a completely different process than stringing it on on a soldering or EV, UV or ribbon basis. So um, uh, so far we see this market it's not um, it's not coming you know to a to a major uh, solution. So we have not been investing too much on this, but we know about it. Perhaps I can, we, we are uh, a producer and, and seller of conductive backseat. So perhaps I can also add something. Uh, I mean, partly, uh, uh, well, you're, you're, you're right. I mean, it's, it's uh, still uh, a niche market. And uh, what we see uh, is that we uh, mostly find our uh, uh, market in the, in the residential markets. You're not talking about uh, by facial modules and uh, the, uh, in, in the market where high efficiency modules where aesthetics is is relevant but that's one uh, major market and uh, where we also have uh, good customers and the other one is more in the integrated building integrated or vehicle integrated because the conductive backseat gives you a lot of uh, flexibility in design so how do you position your your cells your strings your uh, it can be curved uh, so that is uh, a big advantage for the uh, conductive way of cell interconnecting. Yes, I agree with you. Yes, it's true. But from that that flexibility will bring you know from the equipment standpoint, it will it will bring very high complexity and very low volumes. And uh, you know, we are the company but that it, we focus on high high uh, high throughput and uh, more standardization. Let's say. But it's true. I mean, it, who knows? Maybe in the future, and we, if if there is anybody that can actually can come up with a tool that can standardize or make this uh, flexibility of aesthetics to be possible in a production environment, uh, that that's already existing. That's that's not an issue. That, yeah, so the the whole automation, uh, yes, is, is already cost. completed. I would say a high cost. As I mean. We're selling, and we are able to sell in a in a highly cost competitive market. So I I would not classify it as as high cost. Okay. So what do you think it would it is the um, biggest um, bottleneck or the biggest uh, challenge of this technology? Well, I would say so far it has been uh, 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 availability of cells. So we we have been focusing, or let's say we have been selling our conductive backseat to customers which mostly use MWT cells. So they 
uh, and it, it's very difficult to get MWT uh, cells, especially uh, with the whole yeah, fast development of, of uh, cell generations. Uh, you uh, then, then it, that, that made it very difficult. But now with the images of, of IBC cells, uh, which are intrinsically back contacted. Uh, uh, that's also what, what ICO uh, showed. That is, then it becomes much uh, much easier. So that's also why we believe that that you know we're entering now in a, in, a, in a phase where it will be uh, one of the the main bottlenecks is is going to be taken away. Okay, so there, there will there will be ramp up of uh, cell manufacturing, right? Uh, if if let's say our customers who, who uh, can. Uh, if they start switching to uh, IBC type of cells or HPC, uh, then 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 uh, they they will have much more availability of uh, of cell types. So we are so going back. We are waiting for this to happen so we can jump into this market. You know, because we look for usually, of course, we 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 look for the for the biggest trends, um, and then we invest on it, and hopefully it will become a big volume. But so far, we we haven't. Uh, Look it into. I mean, we haven't invested in any other deal related to MWT uh, sales. Yeah. Okay, so I, I think we we are also running up to the time. So uh, you know, uh, just I want to have one final question. So, what are your three key takeaways uh, from this reliable module design event? Uh, any order. I, I, I would say we talk too little about uh, sustainability, uh, at least. Uh, that's, uh, that's an important one. And then and not, not only being circularity or, or the waste problem, but, but I think also about traceability and uh, transparency. Um, and, and, and another takeaway from, from my perspective is, is, is uh, that now I, from, from, from the presentation, I take it that, that the biggest risk of reliability is actually in releasing technologies too early. Uh, as it's, 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 it's like it's going in waves. And mm -hmm. that's something, uh, yeah, I, I don't think we can avoid it, but it's something to realize and, and yeah, and some, somehow adapt to it. Okay. So just to answer your uh, your question, uh, first query, Inco, we have a special platform for sustainability. So we try to differentiate between reliability and sustainability. So that's why we intentionally kept it aside because we had another plan. And, and another theme that is that, that we covered in the past. So, so Christian? So from my side, I'm very happy to see that all major players are adopting um, standards about the durability of the products such as the IC standard that uh, tries to address that and that uh, most of the players are open enough to talk about uh, some things that don't work. Um, Inco mentioned, uh, I think it was you, just a few minutes ago, that the first generation of transparent back sheets didn't perform as they should have. And I remember at the time doing webinars like this one and um, saying, yeah, we are doing glass glass because we are testing that and we don't like the results. And the people from that company that made those back sheets were very angry and saying that nonsense, everything was perfect and we were so bad and everything like that. And I, I, I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, big players, all the big players are saying like, look, this has been tested. It didn't work so well. Let's do it this way until we get a solution, but we see the solution and we will test everything and then you will get the, the good information. Uh, this used not to be the norm. Uh, maybe two or three years ago, people or many manufacturers were kind of hiding behind not sharing information. And I'm very glad to see that this is changing. Uh, I would like to see that across the board and maybe less just things like, yeah, we do test everything and we qualify our suppliers, whatever that means, because it means nothing. Um, but it's the right direction. So uh, Ignacio's presentation for me was really quite positive. I'm very glad to have seen that, for instance. Paolo? So from my side, um, it's nice to see that, um, you know, this kind of platform so we can share information and we learn from each other. 
and also we see that uh at least for myself personally that <clears throat> there are different <clears throat> in a time that there is uh, many different uh, technologies to be uh, being developed, like zero bus bar, IBC, MWT, um, um, uh, and then discussing about the reliability of each of them. It's, it, it's important because it's going to play a major uh, role in this technology being being uh, successfully uh, successful or not. So um, I think it's, uh, it's 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 a good platform to learn to share and. Um, you know, I still don't get. Uh, I mean, the, the, this this race between these new technologies, IBC, AJT, zero uh, uh, BB, and uh, Topcon, SMBB. So it's 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 clear that SMBB now is uh, on top. But uh, I guess future will come with uh, AJT and uh, and uh, or IBC, and then um, it's nice to discuss the reliability of each technology because there are a lot of challenges on each of them. So yeah. Okay, great. Yes, there are several challenges, but there will be solutions also. Yeah, that's 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 what we are here for, right? Yeah. The right. ones who will get them faster are going to be more successful. I mean, that's it. so this is a good platform to identify where you should go. Yeah. Right. I think that's a nice uh, closing remark. So I would really thank uh, each and uh, every one of you. Christian, Imko, and Paulo, thanks a lot for your participation. So now I will hand over the floor to Michael to close the session. Cool, thanks. Um, so I um, yeah, thanks uh, to everyone. I think that was uh, really great. Um, uh, yeah, I think you made my job easy because uh, in the end you have concluded. So what I also learned is really, I think there's no, uh, no mountain that cannot be uh, mounted. Actually, the obstacles are there, but uh, it's as uh, as Imko said in the beginning uh, of his conclusion. It's rather about maybe being a little bit patient. Uh, so, <laughs> both on the producers and on the consumers side, also careful on what you choose for. The solutions are there, but it takes simply time to develop them. Um, otherwise, uh, I think with all that experience we have in solar, <clears throat> we can uh, build on that and uh, yeah, and bring actually this experience to the next level so that this uh, decade-long reliability uh, we are promising for our products actually can also be kept. Maybe I think, Udaya, if you can just show the slides, I just wanted to show you... Um, <clears throat> Um, what comes next. So I think um, thanks again to the sponsors, to everyone participated. Uh, these are our reports that can be downloaded. Next week, we will publish our first um, report on floating solar. It's a market survey on that technology. Um, and we will have soon a next uh, webinar that will be no conference, but a webinar which we will do together with Trina Tracker and where we will simply look into digitalization of power plants also to make sure that we can simply um, <clears throat> meet the needs regarding reliability, durability, but also the needs actually of the power markets because of course trackers play an important role about making power supply easier to digest for the grids, uh, which are uh, not being um, built out as quickly as we and our friends from wind would need it. And that's true both for the distribution and the transmission level. So we will dive into deeper into that. We will also <clears throat> have um, um, together in, in this webinar, not only a presentation from Trina, but also from Solar Power Europe, and from um, PV case. Um, and then finally, we will conclude the year with our um, high efficiency event. Uh, this year, we plan to have a high efficiency solar week in the first week of December, we will really devote one day to each technology. So we will really go deep into Topcon, into heterojunction, into um, back context and we will also take a look into tundra and perovskite so what's next because we are already seeing the first um, companies 
starting to um, to commercialize uh, next gen cells so that leaves me once again to say thank you to everyone who participated the speakers our sponsors and also thanks to everyone who attended and that you've been so at active so if i look at the chat i think there was a lot of communication going on thanks again and have a nice day or evening bye bye